Hey everybody, this is Tom Sorcy. We are back again to do a little more ball motion analysis. Today we are talking about the storm physics. We're going to get right into it with this one. The physics has the NRG hybrid cover stock. You'll remember the NRG from other balls like the high road nano that we did before. This is a hybrid version of it. The core for the physics is the brand new atomic core. It's one of the coolest looking cores that we have. Uh, but I think you'll also see as we take a look here that it's not just looks that will define this ball. Uh, looking at our RG numbers real quick, 2.48 differential 053. Again, we're not really going to dig too deep into that. We're just going to run right into how this thing looks on the lane. Here is a picture of mine. 50 by 5 by 35 layout, 5 inches, pin to PAP. This is a pretty standard layout that I like to put on my asymmetrical balls when I am drilling my first one and just trying to kind of get a feel for what it does. Let's get right into this one and see how she looks. Right out of the gate, we know that we're working with something asymmetrical. We know we're working with something who is taking a relatively strong cover stock but giving us a hybrid version of it. And I've been impressed by the strength of it, even though it's a hybrid. It certainly is one of those balls that, depending on the condition, I can either start with it or it's something that I'm going to get to as like my second option as I start making my way through my arsenal. I've had a lot of success with it on higher volume patterns, longer patterns, where I'm having some trouble getting my ball to tip, where I'm struggling to get it to start reading in the mid lane and my rev rate is not high enough and it has been able to bail me out in a lot of those situations. What has impressed me the most about it is that I've been able to use it deeper into blocks than I expect to. When it comes to these asymmetrical balls, especially the stronger ones, we kind of run into two things that we can find. The first one is that they can be too strong to be able to keep doing as we start blowing the fronts up. And more importantly, when those fronts do blow up, we start to see these asymmetrical balls really check early off of that friction. And we have to make our way into something more symmetrical to be able to still uh, create some reaction that's going to be consistent as we cross the house. I have been impressed with the length into a block that I've been able to use this far longer than I expected to for a ball that's as strong as it is. And I would say, just looking at it uh, in the times that I've used it, and even what we're seeing here, it is certainly in the medium-high area of friction created. This is a ball that you can certainly use in a lot of different environments, uh, especially when there's a lot of oil on the lane or oil down the lane. So the ball that I wanted to compare it to is the Intense Fire. And the reason that I chose that is because... The Intense Fire is another asymmetrical ball that has a hybrid cover stock. So I wanted to see how it would compare to something that we have in our line that is booked pretty similarly. And what we see right out of the gate here is two things. First of all, we see that the Intense Fire is going to create a little less friction for us. It's going to be a little bit weaker than the Physics, but also surprisingly it is a little bit smoother as well. And this is one of the things that really kind of perks me up when I look at this physics as a compliment somewhere in my arsenal. When it comes to the quicker response balls, and I would say that this physics is probably best used as a medium to medium quick response ball, but a lot of these balls that can be used in the quicker response sort of section of our arsenal, a lot of those balls are generally weaker balls. And what's interesting to me is that we have something that is both stronger from creating friction but also quicker and that's a rarity in a lot of situations and I honestly expected this intense fire to be on the quicker of the two and that was mostly because when I think of my intense I think of a ball that's that's pretty quick response and I expected 
to see that when I compared the two. And then I realized the intense fire is smoother than this physics. And it's not a huge difference. We're going to look at it in slow motion in a minute. And we're going to see that it is certainly looking to be more toward the medium response range end of things. And it's not terribly different than the physics, but it's different enough that we have a couple of different options there. And if we're looking for something that's in our medium category and that we still want to get a little bit of that extra kick from an asymmetrical ball, but this physics is too much ball for us, it is too strong, then we do have this other option to get to in the intense fire. And I think that even though by looking at what we see here, we see we're in similar parts of the lane, they're pretty close as far as the strength, pretty close as far as the response time, we can still use them off of each other in different environments. And I've had a lot of success using that intense fire in a different scenario than I tried to. When I first drilled it, I thought, yeah, I'm going to have this ball that I can use later on in blocks, and I'm going to be able to get to it when I get done with my stronger asymmetrical balls. And then I realized that I probably was able to use it better in environments where there was a little more friction and in environments where... Uh, it was going to be a little earlier because it was still a little smoother. And after drilling up this physics, I'm pretty excited that I have both of these options in there, depending on what I'm seeing out there on the lane. Let's take a look at them both side by side here real quick so that we can get kind of a better idea. Again, they are pretty close, but you will see when we look on the left here that this physics is going to be slightly quicker off of that friction. We're talking about making its move over a slightly shorter distance than we see with the intense fire. And this is one of those ones that I will admit to you is pretty close, which is why I really wanted to focus on it in slow motion. But I think it's just different enough, and you can see it just well enough with these two side by side to kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So breaking it back down, I classified the physics here as medium high in friction created. I would also say, though, that it's probably on the medium side, medium to medium high. I think that it can be used in some environments with a little more volume or a little more length, but I have seen it's not going to be anywhere near the same section of balls like the Crux Prime or the Sherlock or things like that. It certainly is a step down from there. When it comes to response time, I listed it as medium quick, and I would also say again, medium to medium quick. Um, it's something that I was surprised I could use as deep into blocks as I was using it and still have it be able to get corner pins out and have my angles a little more open and still get it to look good on the lane and to shape the way that I wanted it to as we were getting a lot more oil down the lane and as we were losing a little more oil in the front. It is certainly something that I have found myself using more and more and more, and I'm very happy that I do have one in my arsenal now. Once again, I want to thank a bunch of people that helped me do all of these. Obviously, Storm and Rotogrip, making the best balls on the planet, give me the opportunity to throw them and show them to you in these videos. Bull you for opening my mind in the way that I want to look at ball motion and Brad Angela Lanes, Brad and Michelle giving me run of the place, like I said before. Tim Friends doing the video for me, helping me out with pictures. Really the unsung hero because he does a lot of work with me. And he does a lot of the hard work that most people wouldn't volunteer for to do for free. So pretty huge thank you, Tim. And lastly, Jim DeWitt for bringing the music for us. You can find his band on Facebook. It is Vacation Days, D-A-Z-E, or find him on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Jim DeWitt. We cranked two of these out here pretty quick, but we got four more in the can that are going to be coming out soon, so keep your eyes on that. We have two new Roto Grip releases coming up, the Winter Solid and the Idle Pearl, and we have two more from Storm to take a look at, too. We have the Crux Prime, and we have the Fever Pitch, so keep your eyes out. We're going to try to get those out here soon. I certainly want to get myself, now that I am back in doing these videos, having them out in a more timely manner, closer to the release date of these balls. So this is at the top of my priority list when I am not at work. So once again, hope you guys liked it. Leave comments, leave questions. I try to answer the YouTube comments as much as I can. Uh, it can be a little cumbersome sometimes, but I try to get in there. If it takes me a little bit to get back to you, I apologize, but I will try to answer everybody that I can. You can also find me on Facebook anytime that you need to to ask me anything. Thanks, guys. Thank you.